We're going live in just a couple of seconds here. So, hmm. Looks like you have a live now, and it's going to record the session as well. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome. My name is Carol Barrow, and I am the founder of SanFranciscoWriter.com. I'm a public relations specialist, and I will be serving as your moderator today for the Horasis USA meeting. And our topic today is the Build Back Better plan assumes much. Uh, today, I am joined by Sarah Isbell, founder and chief executive officer, Mercaptor Discoveries, and Mayor Patricia Locke Dawson of the city of Riverside, California. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and take a few moments to give a quick intro of each of my panelists, and then I'll let them say a few words about themselves, and then we can dig into the topic at hand. Uh, first off, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Glad my to have pleasure. you, yes. Dr. Austin. <laughs> Glad to have you, Ms. Isbell. Um, Mayor Patricia Lock Dawson is a Riverside, California native. She's also a small business owner. She was elected Riverside's 18th mayor in 2020 mm -hmm. as only the second woman to hold this citywide office in the city's 150 year history. Right on. <laughs> Having previously served at every level of government, Mayor Locke Dawson has an extensive record of service to Riverside and to the state of California, most notably serving two political appointments under the two state gubernatorial administrations. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in biology and a master's degree in forestry and watershed man management. Mayor Locke Dawson has been instrumental in passing legislation to secure tens of millions of dollars in state and federal funds for regional conservation, habitat, and infrastructure projects. And she is well known across the state of California as a champion of the Santa Ana River, the longest running river in Southern California. Wow. She and her husband, Scott, have three children. Welcome, Mayor Locke Dawson, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here today. Absolutely. Uh, we're also joined by Sarah Isbell as CEO, President and Co-Founder of Mercaptor Discoveries in Novato, California. Sarah is on the cutting edge for a cure for neurodegenerative diseases and traumatic brain injury. She led her biopharmaceutical company through the development phase and is now preparing for the clinic with an oral medication that will prevent the effects of brain trauma in people who are at most at risk. Athletes, military personnel, survivors of domestic violence, and it will also arrest the progression of chronic neurodegeneration in conditions like Alzheimer's, ALS, epilepsy, alcohol withdrawal, stroke, and more. Sarah's history has given her a solid foundation in science, startups, and even computer programming all fields in which women and minorities are traditionally underrepresented. Sarah initially went to UC Davis where she majored in chemistry and then went on to earn a bachelor's of science degrees in neurochemistry, biochemistry, molecular biology from University of Irvine, California. She also did post-grad work at Genentech under the lead of David Botstein. Over the course of her 23-year career, Sarah has consistently contributed to cutting-edge research. We're really happy to have you join us, Sarah, to talk about how Build Back Better and government funding in general could help to move your work forward. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Great intro. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything that may have gotten left out that either of you would like to add? No. no? You found some new things that I forgot. <laughs> I did. I did a little thinking in your background. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm glad that it was as complete as it was. Um, 
Well, let's get in. You know, I, I think overshadowing this entire discussion, of course, is the events in the news right now, which have to do with Ukraine and our ability to um, support in the region. We also just had the State of the Union last night in which um, I think initially a lot of the focus would have been on Build Back Better, but of course uh, the president had to pivot a little bit and acknowledge the current events. But that said, um, I, I still think it's important to kind of dig into parts of the plan and policies that would really affect both of your fields of work um, quite profoundly. And just starting with you, Mayor Locke Dawson, I know you have a background in um, forestry and watershed and, and you're very passionate about uh, preserving waterways and, and advocating for the Santa Ana River and, and the Riverside uh, River as well. Um, are there elements that build back better that would help your cause or hinder in any way? I wouldn't say hinder. And in fact, I'm very um, looking forward to some of the funding that's coming down to our cities. Uh, President Biden, for those who don't know, has um, four mayors in his cabinet. And so he is well aware of the importance of mayors in, you know, transforming dollars into action. And I think that's a big thing. This is where, you know, this is where recovery begins at the city level. It's where businesses will flourish. Um, it's how, you know, we create the fertile ground for businesses to grow here. And I mean, he's got really three main areas that I think are specifically important to cities that we're going to be able to use the transportation. So there'll be lots of money to not only fix our roads, but connect our communities back together that have been historically separated through different types of um, planning and zoning. That's going to be huge. And there will be money in there also for safe streets and um, charging and fueling and all sorts of stuff. So, um, and they'll reconnect our communities. He also has a bunch of money on climate, energy, and environment for the cities. And this is particularly interesting to Riverside as we have a burgeoning clean and green tech sector here, which I'm trying to develop. It's, you know, industry-driven, university research-led and government-funded, and, and it's all compactly in a geo, um, geographic area near our University of California, Riverside. I'll just mention right there, Riverside has the dubious honor of having some of the worst, worst health air quality in the world, actually. So we are sort of ground zero for smog research and emissions research. So we, we have a lot of opportunity there. And lastly... Um, there's going to be, uh, it's the clean and green tech stuff is important, but there's also um, going to be money for broadband, cyber, and other programs, which is, of mm -hmm. course, the infrastructure that supports businesses. So all those things are going to be very important to us. I'll stop there. <laughs> no, that sounds amazing. Um, and it sounds like I, I didn't realize that Riverside did have that dubious extinction, distinction, but that makes it all the more important to you. Um, to see these changes come through and see them realized um, at ground level, climate-wise, environmentally. I will say it has improved over the years and it really is only certain times of the year now we have bad air quality, but it's because of the research that has come out of this area that uh, improvements have been realized worldwide. That's wonderful. I have um, a question. Can yes, I ask a question? <laughs> Absolutely. Is it, is it because of geography that you're in a bowl and everything from L.A. just comes to you? Boy, oh, spoke I'm a true that. scientist. Yes, <laughs> uh, it is. It's uh, we, yeah, because of the prevailing that. wind patterns and our geography oh, wow. with surrounding mountains. Um, in certain days where the heat and the climate conditions are just right, we get a, a pretty heavy inversion layer in there and it just kind of hangs wow. out. You have a challenge. <laughs> It's great, though, because of, you know, with the electrification of vehicles going on with um, renewables, with the decarbonization within our cities, all of those things are going to um, really affect our air quality, which we're, we're happy about that stuff. It sounds like a lot of those initiatives that you mentioned could also lead to job growth as well. Is that something that you um, get into Absolutely. consideration Absolutely. as well that, that might benefit? 
Yeah, really. It, it absolutely. It's um, you know, there's money for EV fueling, for clean hydrogen hubs, for all those kinds of things, which I think will help us. And the broadband stuff, I think, laying, laying, you know, um, just getting getting our our infrastructure set up under that program will be huge. And also, I, I, I think this is relevant to you. Is we've got a medical school here with. Um, you know, research Serenity or medical school in the in the pharma sector. So I would, if you would like to come to Riverside, I would love to have you here. <laughs> Is that to me or Carol? I think that's to you. You, Sarah. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I I had friends at UC Riverside. Are you talking UC Riverside Medical yes, School? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because I went yeah. to Irvine, so I yeah, know it's Riverside. right there. But, yeah. um, there's so many opportunities surrounding, you know. Um, and we have logistics here. Our logistics industry is huge, and our um, uh, manufacturing in this area for clean manufacturing is very important. And we have the facilities to support that, so it's all good. That's all. I, I just had to put that. So plug Riverside. In. I it's shameful Riverside. plug, but I had to do. No, it. no, <laughs> gotta plug it for sure. And um, that's a great segue into kind of speaking to you, Sarah, and. Mm -hmm. And the impact that Build Back Better could have on your research and on just um, on healthcare in general. Well, I kind of have I have two things about it. But for the um, medical, there is actually very little into research. Now, there is a whole lot about community renewable energy. I mean, it's great. There's I mean, that's a lot, but it really kind of leaves us behind in research. Um, mm. There's a plan for Medicare. There's a lot, you know, to and to get Americans all health insurance. But when it comes to funding, you know, new scientific research, there's a, I found one little part in it that said um, to fund um, our uh, laboratories or uh, in, uh, government laboratories or something. Um, and I couldn't find much info on what exactly that meant. And my concern is is that the, the system of research is broken right now. But do you know only 1% of a government grant will go to the science? Like, say, even a foundation. Under 5% of that money that you're giving to a nonprofit, say, for research, goes to the research. There's all this mm. overhead. Mm. And it costs $3 billion to take a drug from bench to shelf, you know, out to the market. At the end of the day, it would only have cost us forty million. That's forty compared to three thousand, right? And yeah. um, and it's just that the people who are making these decisions of what to fund have alternative motives. You know, it's all about making money and what funds and what the investors want to have done. So, for one, I think just throwing more money into the you know grants and say we're going to make more grants if he's even going to do that. I think that would be a mistake kind of needs a, a, you know, like he's, he's talking about energy and all this. I kind of think, wish he would do that and break out research, you know, even. Sounds like we need more, more yeah. scientists who are not connected perhaps to the drug industry or mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals industry. No, we need more pure scientists and academics who could help yeah. drive that policy. Would you say that's a fair um, that, kind of critique? Yeah, that, I mean, that would work. How do you get that? to happen though right it's really hard to <laughs> cost so much to even get into college right get a med degree but i think it's very important as a country you know to think about you know are you leading the way of scientific innovation with with drugs i mean mm -hmm. we know the whole idea of treating the brain with anything is just nobody can do um but it, it's medicine is um there's no politics, right? There's no borders. There's none of that's one thing why I love it, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, you kind of want your country to be the one that brings about all this um, new drugs and stuff. And there's just very little for it. So I was a little bit bummed. But at the same time, I think it's great for all those other things. I just wish, you know, I could see more um, towards thinking of, you know, people doing the real science, not the executives, you know, projecting the, the science. I have a question for you, um, Sarah, I, if, if it's okay, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I was just, we just met with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, met with President Biden, and we met with his cabinet. And the, um, the 
there there was they were talking about a lot of money going into I think it was NSF in a way yes. that yeah right so is there is is there a, a disconnect between NSF funding and drug research I'm just curious there is a bit it gets very complicated right okay we actually had an NSF grant oh, a long time ago I got one in college but we've applied for those now um, and again there's corruption there. I hate to say it, even at the FDA level, as we recently saw with Biosource and the Alzheimer's drug going out, decisions are being made based on politics. And the NSF, when they read a grant, you know, we've re we've written grants and they reply pretty much by saying, no, we don't really care about this area. You know, it's like there's not a big enough market there. And I'm like, but you're supposed to be government and non you know, but you find it. And so if they put more money to NSF, the way it is now, the way it's structured, we're just going to get more waste. And mm. if you look over the past you know, 20 years, the amount of money into research has grown a lot, right? Mm -hmm. There's these, these pharmaceutical companies, the amount of money they got, and the government has been increasing money. But did you know progress has stayed flat? Nothing mm. has come out of all this money. Nothing's worked. It's, would it's you like, say that though that you're seeing yeah. some? Would you say that this uh, current administration perhaps is an improvement over the previous administration in terms of science funding, or is it just at a at a baseline? You know, I'm sure the intent is better. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. I believe the intent really is to want to really help, and I think there is a disconnect with people understanding that there's something really wrong going on underneath it. It's kind of when science went to the stock market with Genentech, it kind of all turned to if you not a big enough market, we're not going to pursue it. And people in the government, you have lobbyists, right? It says if yes. you do this, then I'll vote for you. But that is like, well, we're going to stick with looking at this one drug or something. And it's like, let's all stop and back up and reevaluate how we're putting out the money. But right, <clears throat> so fast you know we don't really have time to think you know through everything and like climate change all that that really leads i mean that's a big thing that everyone can relate to but research that's is so definitely. obscure you know and because uh -huh. nothing comes of it nobody trusts it <laughs> well sarah you actually point to something i think that's critical infrastructure that we don't often refer to as infrastructure and that's education and research, right? Yeah, and absolutely. which then support, create talent pipelines for our businesses, create, um, yes. you know, um, just business opportunities and yep. their multiplier opportunities. It's so foundation, you know, right, you right. discover new new things that just can explode into a new project. They're all those jobs. And it, and it goes back to yeah. making a competitive economy right and oh, yeah. on, the, on the global stage so which we're bad with that at grad schools in america we're not as you know everyone is like go to uh a... well actually grad schools are great here it's our under education system right yeah. so you kind of want to internationally go up to 12th grade and then come here for college is <laughs> kind of the way but <laughs> yeah you know the whole well, education system and i think he has stuff for education there right? there in is schools. there there is a yeah. robust investment in education and That's i think right. that should help on so many levels i'm sure mayor for you it's good to see i know that community colleges are especially championed by jill biden dr jill biden right. and so that's that's come into a little bit more of the spotlight long time neglected community colleges are now kind of mm -hmm. getting a little bit more recognition as being those um initial backbones of, of people who might not otherwise have the financial stability or the financial background to begin their journey in higher education are able to access it through the community colleges. Um, ha has the funding that um, you've seen from the government or the plans that you've seen come through been beneficial to Riverside Community Colleges or, or to the educa higher educational system there in ways that could help the sciences and other yeah, it's always a struggle, right, to fund our biggest university system, I think, is Cal State, and then we have the University of California, but, and then we have private 
private colleges as well. But we have one of the biggest community college systems in mm. California, and it and it's um, supported fairly well. But I think it plays a real pivotal role in our economy in a number of different ways. And so investing at that level, I think, is important. But even yeah. before that, and I speak as a former school board member, investing in our K through 12 to create pipelines into our community colleges with, um, you know, encouraging more participation and funding programs mm -hmm. to create a pipeline of talent, skilled labor, internships, apprenticeships, mm -hmm. connecting them with businesses to employ them at the end, I think is, it's kind of all part of a, a flow, right? It's an articulated up the line. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to be doing to, when you talk about investing in education, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. I went to a junior college, actually, because oh. of money. It was great. You, you know, um, the work you do at a junior college in a year, and it's the same textbook, same everything that you do in just a quarter if you start university. So it's really good. It kind of just stretches out. But you do the same thing, and it's so much cheaper. And did you know in California they have this amazing thing with the universities, with the junior colleges, where um, you can make an agreement? And it says you will for sure get into this university if you complete these classes and pass them. So, you know, you're able to find out before what do I do? And then you're guaranteed to get in. So that's a great way for people to get in, you know, community I college. Anyway. Yeah, because you can get see what you want for that first year. But again, I think if when I meet people, right, a lot of times I, I hear, oh, I wish I could go to college. I can't afford it. Oh, I, you know, I've heard out of that and I say you know because people don't know about a million dollars probably goes each year unclaimed for you know uh, school grants and stuff people don't know where to find them there's all these little grants and stuff and if people felt the money was there I think so many more would go to college I mean learning's been right everyone wants to learn if they aren't struggling for money and food so. This is true. This is true. And that's why I think it's yeah. encouraging that there is, you know, a priority on those community colleges and mm -hmm. and on, on higher education in general. Um, and hopefully that's something that you're you're going to be able to um, even strengthen and make more robust um, in Riverside as well. Um, there was something else about all of that. Oh, yes. Another kind of campaign promise, not quite a promise, but another mm -hmm. idea that Biden had, and I think it was originally built into the plan for Build Back Better, was student loan forgiveness, which could potentially <laughs> <Please. forget. laughs> so many untold millions, perhaps billions, um, to and, and flood that into the economy and make that you know circulate through the economy yet again. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be incredible, and I'm sure it perhaps would allow people who might not otherwise yeah. be able to pursue higher degrees in the sciences, mm -hmm. who then might not be as beholden to, um, you know, get that corporate position or whatever it may be, and maybe able to dedicate themselves to uh, more academic pursuits or looking for that next discovery that could be the next mm -hmm. breakthrough for as, you, as what you're working on, Sarah, which is, you know, um, neurodegeneration, a cure for neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's, and even those rare diseases that mm -hmm. may not perhaps have that much monetary potential, yeah. but have the potential to really, really help and heal mm -hmm. so many yeah. that are suffering. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And I, I also think too, just um, we talk a lot about college and education, but I think one big thing government can do is um, you know, it's our, our, our role in our role should be to facilitate business growth, you know, ensure that there's infrastructure like broadband and ensure public safety. Right. That, that's what that's what government should do. That's what we do best. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't be getting in the way of business. We should be mm -hmm. facilitating business growth. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we talk a lot about the great resignation and people leaving, but I think a lot of people are leaving to become self-employed. I know that business uh, applications, new business applications increased 23% from 2020 to, to 2021 um, nationally. So they were like, we had like 5.4 yeah, yeah. 4 million was in 
in 2020 and 2021, it went up to 5.4 million. So people are wanting yeah. to be their own bosses yeah. and they're wanting to be entrepreneurs. So we have to help them too, right? So mm -hmm. I, think, I think those are the kinds of things by, by keeping the street safe, by making sure yeah. they have access to the infrastructure that they need. I think that's a, a big role government can play. It's holistic, it, isn't it? In a way, you need absolutely. the end, you need their good infrastructure to put what's the ver earlier stuff into, you know. Um, but I think, you know, the earlier stuff, like with the research, it's so long term. It's hard to, especially for, you know, America. I know there's other countries where they only think of long term, like the next yeah. generation. Yeah. We tend to think of the immediate term. So, and there's so much needed immediately. That, you know, the earlier stuff tends to, to get left out. Um, one thing I was going to say is um, the the loan forgiveness. You know, I tell you, you can come out now with like $200,000 loan from, you know, a, a, say, you know, an upper graduate degree. But then you can't get a job because there's so many, right? So then you, you end up working, you know, at a, I, I know someone came up with a degree, worked at a clothes store and had to try and pay back these loans, you know, and that really discourages people because then that word gets out, you know, you'll get. But then again, oh, Sarah, okay, as, why go start working now? And as uh, the mayor was saying, I think maybe that might have been part of what drove you as well to head up your own company. And because, you know, I know you were always because we go back a ways and you were always really deep into the research and, and making those discoveries. But then you also took it, took the whole enterprise by the reins and decided, OK, I've got to create this company myself. You know, I've got and I think that's where a lot of Americans found themselves about a year and a half yeah. or so ago saying, OK, <laughs> maybe there's not the perfect company to hire me right now. So yeah. I'm going to have to create my own business to make make what I want to have happen. Right. And that's kind of your story in, in a way. People realize what they can do, you know, when they're at home and you have work, you start figuring mm -hmm. out it's like, hey, I got ideas, mm -hmm. which kind of relays into that com complacency uh, issue. Like, do we think Americans are going to be complacent and not want to like, let's go, let's build. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the answer we get, there's an issue there. Um, because we're all so tired, right? We all have to work so hard for a little amount of money. And the burnout. I, I think it would be nice. And it, it's so you wouldn't think it's kind of counterintuitive, but to give people more vacation, <laughs> make a four day work week. Because I think if people had more time with family and more time to think, you know, um, mm -hmm. they'd be more creative and you'd be more happy. You know, well, and, I think one of the things that build back better as well is childcare is is a really big yeah. component of it, mm -hmm. um, and and that is is something that we used to just take for granted or not even acknowledge as part of our society. It was just like, well, there's the caretaker, and that tended to be the woman, and yeah. that was it, whether mm -hmm. she was working forty hours a week or not. And I'm just so heartened to see childcare become so much yeah. more um, acknowledged. Uh, emphasized and provided for. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, Mayor, is that something that um, that you see as having the potential to um, allow people to pursue those those business goals and and um, make those achievements that you were kind of alluding to earlier? Absolutely. I think the you know the impact on women. We saw that right. Women left the workforce. Women were left behind much more during the pandemic. You know, not only were they taking care of children, but they were taking care of other people within the family. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, having quality child care enables you to take care of your family as well as make a living. Right. So mm -hmm. I do think it's not just um, the federal government is investing it, but we also have state investment in it as well. So mm -hmm. it's important. Yeah. That's, that's really a win for women, right? The child care. Absolutely. People used to not think of it because it's like, well, you're the mother, you're not working. That I believe, you know, a lot of a lot of single mothers who are maybe pursuing higher education. That's that's huge too to have the potential for yeah. child care. Yeah. Um, is that something that you found when you were at at the meeting of mayors uh, recently? That were there a lot of mayors that were kind of. Um, Plan that we're seeing that as a huge benefit to their cities as well, or is it not something that has kind of penetrated to that level or trickled down? Oh, I think we're all aware of it. I think we're all very much aware of it and very keen to ensure that 
Um, that's another, what I would call an infrastructure piece to our economy, right? Mm -hmm. Is how do we ensure that people are able to work if they want to? How do we ensure that they're able to take care of their families, right? So, um, you know, that it's not just about profit, it's about people, right? It's, it's, it's about, um, you know, our communities and making sure they're taken care of too. So that is kind of the role of the mayor, really. (laughs) And it's the role of the CEO too. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's the role of the CEO often too. Yeah. And I know Sarah, you you've like had to kind of step in and fill that role for many of your employees as you were going through the pandemic. Many who were having childcare issues, and mm-hmm. many who were trying to provide for their families. And I think it's wonderful to have at least the promise and the plan of some kind of um, government support as well to help mm-hmm. people who are entrepreneurs be able to provide that support for their teams. Mm-hmm. The reason I actually had to form the company was because we found this discovery and uh, we knew it wouldn't go anywhere because it's so new. Nobody listens to new. They don't want to take big, big risks. You know, they want to take little, just moderate risks. Um, so we were kind of forced to have to take this on our own if we wanted it to get out because the money's not there for this brand new innovation. And there's something that, that, uh, the mayor said is, you're right, if you think of people, profit follows, right? You don't think of the profit. First, because a happy person wants to do good, right? Wants to Mm -hmm. go out there and work, is not tired. And if you don't have to think of, you know, is my child, I left her with this person, I can't afford that much, you know, you're worried. But if you know they're in a good place, and you don't have to worry about what we're gonna do for dinner tonight, you know, you can focus on what you're learning and of course, it goes, you know, the more educated we become, the more bigger jobs we can get, the more money, you know, the higher salaries. And it just all around will just, you know, bring more to the company, right? Just focus on the problem. But it takes time. You know, these would be long term plans, which is tricky. Well, as really- I mean, we're, we're kind of coming sort of nearing the end of our session. And if you could say one thing that you would like to add to build back better as a scientist, I'm going to start with you, Sarah, and then I'm, I'm going to um, go to you, Mayor, and see what you would also like to add. But as a scientist, what would you say would be most beneficial to moving forward your research, to making um, your discovery actually become something that um, people could benefit from and would start saving lives tomorrow? Take the money out of the private sector. Private sector should not be funding the research, which they are, because then it's based on profit. And the government should take on more of that. And it will actually cost less because if they put it towards places, so they have people that vet it, that are postdocs, that are the scientists, the money goes into the right place, we'll get more you know, growth in that area for actually less than what we're spending now because it's so inefficient. So actually to do kind of a, a makeover of that system of how government funds research. Because mm-hmm. right now, because they don't really, it's the private sector and it's, you know, it's not really working. So wish I could see that. One day, don't get to us. <laughs> One day, uh, Mayor, Mayor, would there be anything else that you would add that would strengthen the plan in a way that would kind of bolster communities like Riverside that are starting to recover from this unprecedented lockdown and and this unprecedented times that we've been all experiencing collectively? I think we need to invest in the jobs of the future right now. I think we need to invest in STEM careers and I think we need to fund more. Um, uh, We have, we have uh, incubators here in Riverside need to get that money directly into the hands of the entrepreneurs who are coming up with these great ideas. And I think that's really important and I don't think we do that enough and, and, and it's a risk, but it's, it's, with with much risk comes much reward. So yes, exactly. Amen to that. I, I I think that's a wonderful risk and a wonderful investment. So hopefully we'll see more of that. Well, thank you both so much for joining me. I know I want we to have to the Riverside now and meet you. <laughs> I'm sure we I can make have that happen. <laughs> yeah. Come on down to Riverside. I would love to. I would love to show you around down here. Okay.
great. I, I hear it's beautiful and there's a wonderful university there. I'm sure you'd love to take a tour of that, Sarah. Yeah. So um, wonderful having both of you. Thank you so much. It's good to hear perspectives from two people from you know such different backgrounds and experiences, but yet so many shared experiences at the same time. So yeah. thank you right. both. And, well connected. Um, <laughs> thank yeah, you. we will see right. each other here next year. All right. Thanks so All much. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.